I'm sure you've all heard of clove. You've seen it, smelt it. And if you think about it for a moment, you can probably smell that Christmas smell in your mind if we're not already at Christmas by the time this is published. So um, it's an amazing and long-lived herb, and it's got some phenomenal um, conversation behind it and tradition behind it. It is a fantastic herb, and it's so interesting that it was used to create, I mean, cause destruction, really, yes. and changed a world landscape. As many things change the world landscape, mm-hmm. clove has that on of being one of those things that changed the landscape. Hello and welcome. Mentoring with Geraldine is a bite-sized practitioner podcast for naturopaths, nutritionists, herbalists and practitioners. This podcast responds directly to your needs, the needs of the practicing natural therapist. With interviews, herbal discussions, something business and something clinical each week, you'll get the variety you need and enjoy to stay motivated in practice. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to Mentoring with Geraldine and the Bite Size Podcast. Or if you found us, of course, there's the YouTube channel so that you can see what Christine from the Herbal Extract Company has brought today to talk about. And it is clove. I'm sure you've all heard of clove. You've seen it, smelt it. And if you think about it for a moment, you can probably smell that Christmas smell in your mind if we're not already at Christmas by the time this is published. So um, it might be surrounding you at the moment. And you might have had it in mulled wine even. So um, it's an amazing and long-lived herb and it's got some phenomenal conversation behind it and tradition behind it. So welcome, Christine, and um, please tell us about clove. Yes, well, it is one of those spices that was part of the spice trade along with cinnamon. And yeah, I've got some of the raw material here while we're talking about it. It's a beautiful, distinctive, it's actually the unopened bud of flower, like the floral bud of an evergreen tree. Wow. I'm sure you've all seen those. I don't know if you can see that, but there's the raw material that we use. Yep, and lovely and dark. Amazing aroma. And I guess yeah. one of the things, there's quite a large percentage of essential oil in yeah. clove, which gives it this amazing aroma. And that's where a lot of its action comes from. And just while yeah. we're here, I'll show you our, this is our product. So, oh, look at that. Wow. See. Doesn't that change so significantly yeah. when it goes into water? Yeah, it goes into the milky and that's... It has almost a life of its own in that water, doesn't it? Yeah, and that's all the different constituents. Yeah. Very cloudy and again, Again, an amazing aroma as you said very Christmassy which is why we've chosen to do this one because I mean as you said the stories around it so actually it's shaped world history clove wow. um, being part of the spice trade at expeditions and wars and monopolies and generated fantastic wealth in the early days just because of all these you know, I think sort of the expeditions and wars that it's created. Yeah, because it was used in trade. And, you know, in medieval Europe, uh, spices were scarce, Mm. hence why they were so expensive. So clove was actually seen as a sign of indulgence. I mean, in modern society now, they're just dime a dozen, aren't they? You wouldn't even think about it. It was a sign of indulgence, a show of wealth. Uh, Hence, you know, it was a rare prize that was reserved for special occasions. So Hence why it was brought out at Christmas time and used as, uh, in the pomanders. So hopefully everyone who's listening is going to make some pomanders for Christmas where you pierce the skin of an orange with the clove and it gives off an amazing orange clovey aroma, which reminds us all of Christmas. You know, it's a decoration, but also useful for keeping away insects is another use for, it, for the pomanders. Not only scent the house, but give away moths and other insects. Which is perfect for Christmas in Australia and New Zealand and in this side of the world where, you know, they might be keeping away the moths and smelling in the northern hemispheres and it's winter and it's cold and it's dark. You know, if we've got something else rather than just citrus, the citronol, calendars, you know, the candles, sorry, then to have something else that will keep away some of those bugs, you know, and give you that lovely Christmassy smell is going to be, you know, amazing. Just what we need. Or I haven't seen a pomander made for years and maybe (laughs) I might actually make one this year. And if I do, I will post it in the group Strictly Education and Sport, where I always am on a Tuesday doing training Tuesday. So one... A good craft with the kids, actually, I find. Yeah. Good. Here's an orange, here's some clothes, stick them in. <laughs> yeah. And I like then... patterns and it's very easy to do. And just have yeah. them on the table and the aroma is so beautiful. 
Yeah, so beautiful. The main medicinal applications, of course, are digestive disorders, yeah. but a lot of people will notice it from, you know, oral as well, yeah. from exactly. tooth pain and for the essential oil. So it actually just goes on to the space in the mouth. So we can put it directly on, but we don't need a lot of it. Well, as you can chew them as well to get that yeah. action highlight that and I wrote in 226 BC the Chinese were chewing them but they had an audience of the emperor so they had sweet breath yeah it's been around for a very long time as well but and even now I mean if you go to your dentist they mm-hmm. will have clove in their surgery mm-hmm. packing after operations it's actually used in practice in medical practice one of the few herbs uh, gets used in medical practice yeah. yeah well it's a you know that local anesthetic and analgesic yeah, exactly. so of course it's absolutely perfect to pack around a tooth where they've just done that bit of surgery and you know it smells nice and all of the things that go with it so because of that eugenol in it so it's absolutely perfect perfect to have at the dentist so i wonder if the dentists will start having the pomodoro in there and um, they can have a their orange and clove on the counter to recommend it then if they take it that far you know obviously the aroma is also coming from the essential oil, but and, and that's where most of the research has been done when i've researched this head there's not a lot done on the whole herb no. but because there is a lot of essential oil in the raw material then a lot of these studies can translate into the whole herb mm-hmm. as well, which means, you know, it's very high in antioxidants. Yeah. And as you said, that local anaesthetic, analgesic, vermifuge for worms, you know, viral and bacterial infection, and as well as, uh, you know, it can be used for coughs as well. It's got that expectorant action. Mm-hmm. So again, you know, we've talked about a time recently you know, it has that essential oil that's working on the infections and it's very versatile actually. It um, is. With the digestive disorders, you know, indigestion, so good after Christmas dinner. Yeah. So <laughs> I mean, it's... The modulation and oxidative stress, so... Yeah, it's great for external application and internal application. So that's one of the things that I do encourage when people are thinking about using a herb is the on and in. So if we're using it for, you know, fungal infections or athlete's foot or whatever it might be, it's also a case of writing the microbiome and changing the internal makeup of the body as well. So we're not going to ingest essential oil as the way to go whereas the tincture has a very it's what did you say 18 percent of essential oil in the bud so you're going to get a small amount of that essential oil which is probably just the right amount because again this is by creating this tincture we're getting something that's very close to nature and it's uh, now grows in lots of places and it's readily available it doesn't cause war anymore um <laughs> thankfully but it's really really versatile herb and I certainly have it on my shelf so when I bought clove though a little trick for those who are new to practice you don't use much of it you know it's a very small amount that is used in a tincture it's um so I actually shared a bottle with uh, another naturopath so we bought one bottle and we took half each and that's been you know it's great you know when you're buying your herbs if you've got another naturopath or herbalist that you buy with because with something like herb which is quite specific although quite wide usage range, it's quite a low dose herb. So we don't use much of it, but it is a fantastic Christmas herb. And here we are getting close to Christmas. So it's the perfect or around Christmas by the time this is published. So it's absolutely brilliant for now. And we can create our own little orange with sticking stick those cloves in that orange. <laughs> yes. And remember to use some for your indigestion after your Christmas. I mean, yes if you eat too much if you're yeah too much. great for indigestion digestive yeah and it's going to freshen that breath after all of that food that you've just eaten over the <laughs> over the best of time so um, not that i'm going to be chewing a whole clove anytime soon i've got to be honest that's not a top priority for me but it is a fantastic herb and it's so interesting that it was used to well to create and i mean cause destruction really yes. and you know it changed a world landscape as many things change the world landscape mm-hmm. clove has that honor of being one of those things that changed a landscape all those years ago so um, a really interesting herb so we've got anything else we've missed let's see that herb again the liquid herb because it changed so completely yeah. once it went in because of the constituents within the clove so 
you know, it's gone a milky color in there for those on the podcast rather than the YouTube channel. It's very milky, very smooth looking. And that's because of those constituents in it rather than it just being clear. It's a very different look. We have the, uh, yeah, and we can see those little flower. clove buds. Yeah. Yeah, you can see how they're a flower with the little edges around them or the unopened flower. So, yeah. So amazing. So thank you very much. Oh, sorry. I was just saying, yeah, was... with living in Sri Lanka, is a lot of, uh, it's called the Spice Isle. There's yeah. a lot of clove trees. Oh. And it looks just like that on the tree, but green. But green, so, of that's course. Right. Yeah, so they're beautiful to look at as well. Wow. Trees, yeah, they're growing everywhere. Yeah, and of course, if they're coming from somewhere like Sri Lanka, it's going to be very hard for them to trade all those years ago. Yeah. They would have been, you know, you've got to get them from an island over to the mainland, and then you've got to track them all the way up across through Europe to get to everywhere. So no wonder they were so prized and so yeah. difficult to get if they're coming from island states and yeah. from that environment. By the time they got there, I'm sure they were dried. But that's amazing. They're absolutely amazing little birds. So, um, yeah, they're great. Is there anything else we've missed? Is there anything we've forgotten? Yeah, I think we've covered it, haven't we? Good old clove. So thank you very much for joining me again on the Bite Size Podcast. And I really look forward to seeing you again very soon. Yeah, see you soon. Thanks so much for joining me today. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast for the weekly episodes. If you'd like even more support and learning, then the Academy is for you. Here you'll find part two of the herbal discussions, more clinical learning and case studies to support your clients in practice. Bye for now.